He gon' pull up with them sticks and hop out with them choppers. Walking out the tent in blue Balenciagas. I called her out, now I got blood on blue Balenciagas. What it do YouTube, my name is Bear Witness and welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a nice day and before we get the video started, for everybody that's supported the videos of late, thank you guys so much and anybody that's joined Bear Squad, you guys are awesome. Now, let's hop right into it. Today we have a couple of different things talking about archetypes, mostly the defensive type of archetypes. So, first off, we start off with a text from Mike Wang, or a tweet, my bad, a tweet from Mike Wang. Um, that says, uh, someone asked him, and they say, it feels like slashers and post scores are going to be very good this year. How can they be stopped? To which he replies, it really helps to have a rim protector. If not, you're probably going to need help. Now, when I say this, guys, I, I don't want to hear any bitching from you guys. When you guys get dunked all over, if you guys don't put at least half of your archetype as rim protector, you know? Because here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, it doesn't sound super fun to play a rim protector, but when you're getting these snatch blocks from your takeover badge, everybody's going to be like, oh snap, that's actually a nice build. I can't believe he just took the ball out of my hand in midair. Because that's the crazy thing you're going to be able to do. They're actually incorporating that into your like OP part of your build. So that's going to be pretty awesome. I'm actually pretty stoked to see like a lot of clips of that. So that is, like I said, that's just going to be pretty awesome in general. And I hope a lot more people incorporate that into their build. Now, next up, we have pure lockdowns. And someone asked him, How are pure lockdowns looking for 2K19? And he says, Pure locks can have a dramatic impact. You have to work really hard to score against a good one. Now, this isn't saying, Oh, hey, go run out and make a pure lockdown. But if you guys are already pure lockdown players and we're looking forward to looking to making another one this year, you guys are probably going to see some significant changes because last year I know that I had a couple of friends that were pure lockdowns or tried to make pure lockdowns and they just weren't getting what they wanted out of their build. Uh, the year before, pure lockdowns also seemed to not be the best, you know, still consistently getting their ankles broken and stuff like that. So, with this year, I hope they can be just as dominant as every ar other archetype. And I'm actually kind of curious to see if they, you know, they might make it into one of those. Because I want to make about three builds this year, guys. And I might peek into my third build. I'm not positive yet. But... Don't worry, if you guys were thinking about making pure lockdowns, but you're like, man, can they have the offensive consistency that I want them to have? Don't worry, Mike Wang's got you covered, and this is why I bring you this type of information. He says they can be good finishers at the rim, but they tend to struggle from the perimeter, unless they're really good at shot timing. Now, don't freak out about that, guys, because if you're a shooter and you're like, man, I really would like to be a good two-way shooter like I would love to be great on defense as well he goes on to say that 3 and D players which for you guys that aren't necessarily basketball savvy when it comes to terms like that means you know two way shooter like so you're a three way like I mean you shoot three pointers and you're able to play defense really well that's what he means by 3 and D he says 3 and D players are always a solid choice if you know how to use them so yes will it take a little practice on your end maybe you catch a couple l's while you're working on trying to perfect your craft maybe but ultimately it'll be what you want in the long run so that's pretty exciting as well in its own right now one of the last things i wanted to talk about to you guys today was the ability to the like the defensive mechanic in itself has been improved for lack of a better word it's just been monumentally improved instead of instead of somebody just being able to contest your shot by 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 just being next to you by just looking at you by just being intimidating and just staring at you all they they don't have to do that anymore they actually have to work at defense this year and that's where the skill gap comes from because it doesn't matter how good your offense is if somebody can play a defense against you you don't have an offense at all so it doesn't matter if you have a 99 overall three. If you don't, ha if you don't know how to use it, if you don't know how to get away from somebody, that it doesn't even have to be a pure lockdown at this point. What we're talking about. I'm gonna get into the tweet in just a moment. I just wanted to reiterate, the defense has been improved. Now he goes on to say it's a game changer, 
and it will expose a lot of poor defenders. It's important to be in a guy's jersey and get a hand up this year. Just hugging up against a shooter with a hand down, or sorry, that was my phone, or gaping off with a late closeout and you're risking it. Now here's the thing. This means, this, this is like a catch-22. Because yes, you get more benefits for being in somebody's jersey. But this means, and having a hand up, but this means if you're not smart about it, you will get your ankles broken. And you will have a lot of people blow by you based on the fact that if they if they master their dribble craft, you, it's so, you really got to pick and choose how you want to play these games. So, all in all, in a, in a way, this is kind of telling us that if you've got a playmaker in your build, Anybody that doesn't have a, a, a defensive build is probably going to be easier to deal with than people that have it. So, this is making for crazy controversial builds that are going to be the most fun to be using. All in all, guys, I really feel like 2K19 is going to be a W for everybody because the ability to completely customize your character in the way that not only you see fit, but everybody can see fit. Like, I am determined to make a build that personified street ball in my in my opinion you know breaking ankles dunking on people like i cannot wait to make that build and i cannot wait to see what it does in the park but the end of this video guys is going to be a little bit different we're coming up on it and today i wanted to share with you guys my 2k18 hall of fame ceremony now i know that sounds a little bit weird but i realized after talking to a couple of people in uh, the park the other day that a lot of people didn't even get to see that mostly because they hadn't grinded and because you have to reach a certain amount of milestones in order to get them so you can completely grind out most of your my career and still lack those prerequisites to actually get the hall of fame cutscene so if you guys have never been able to watch it i hope you guys enjoy watching it with me at the end of the video but before we get into that if you guys like the video make sure you guys leave a like down below also if you guys haven't joined bear squad and you're just now coming along on this channel make sure you hit it up because we'll be doing 2k19 content all year thank you guys so much for watching the video and i'll see you guys next time i'm out of here peace wow <clears throat> uh you know, back when I was uh, when I was starting out, when I was undrafted, when I wasn't sure if I should uh, quit music for basketball or, or vice versa, and I was just trying to work my way onto the NBA roster. You know, back then, if somebody had told me that uh, that one day I'd be given an acceptance speech at the Basketball Hall of Fame in front of some of the greatest players to, to who have ever lived. I would have thought no. I would have said, man, you're crazy. Uh, you're absolutely crazy. Um, this is just beyond my wildest dreams. And um, it means a lot to me. Now, I don't want to bore you guys. And, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll try my best to keep this brief. Okay. <clears throat> I wouldn't be here without my parents. Mom, Dad, I love you. And you know you're, they're the first ones to talk your ear off and say, you know, how they knew this stuff was going to happen and how they knew I would make it to the Hall of Fame. And, um, you know, at the same time, when I stopped playing ball for two years to focus on music, they were supportive. Um, everything I wanted to do, they were supportive. As long as I worked to be great at it. And I think that's the lesson that my parents instilled in me. Always put the work in to be great. And I gotta mention my friend B Fresh. Now some of y'all may know <laughs> that she is. <laughs> She's my oldest friend. And we've known each other since we were kids and you know, she claims that we're in the same family tree, but B, I don't really think it works out. <laughs> uh, but she's the one that, during that two-year hiatus, she said, nah, nah, DJ, you gotta be balling. DJ, you gotta keep balling. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think she just encouraged me because, you know, I was her best bet to get to uh, Kobe Bryant, but, you know, real is real. And I appreciate you, B. You've been a real one. 
And everybody here knows uh, Shammy. Now, people uh, can't believe it when I tell them that Shammy was my mentor. People say, Shammy was your mentor? He was. Shammy was my mentor. He taught me a lot about the game. I mean, he taught me about how to stay mentally and physically ready, how not to dwell on the mistakes, the importance of the handshake. And uh, I was extremely fortunate to be his rook. And, uh, and I know just me saying that right now, I can already hear him taking the credit for this Hall of Fame speech. I can hear you, Sham. <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank my coaches. You know, I've, I've been enormously lucky over my career to, uh, in so many ways. And my coaches were always there helping me to be better, showing me concrete things that I could work on and take to the next step or the half step. And if I, if I had an idea for the team that would benefit the group, they implemented it. They listened to me. And at that point, what more could you ask for? So shout out to my first real coach in the league, Coach D. <laughs> I appreciate you. Oh, one more thing. This is important. I want to thank, from the bottom of my heart, the game of basketball. This game has given me so much. And I used to say this, and Be Fresh can attest to this. Music called me. But basketball called me back. And that's the truth. You know, basketball is such a, a beautiful game in that it, it teaches you things about life. And it's, it's teaching me still. It shows you the importance of communicating with people, chemistry, teamwork, about how to win and lose with class. Because as we all know, you won't win every game. And here's what I want to tell all the kids out here. All the kids out there who, who want to know how to get to my position, just listen to the game. Listen to what it tells you. It will tell you everything you need to know. So thank you once again. Thank you. Walking out the tin and blue Balenciaga